I would like to welcome everyone to Reaping the Harvest Community Church and those uh, YouTube watchers and subscribers. God bless you and thank you for joining in with us today. I do want to extend a happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, what a father we have in, in God Jehovah Jireh. You know, uh, the, the, the privilege that we have as men and what, how God has created us in his own image and his likeness to be leaders and st strong leaders as Christian men, you know, uh, we can't take that for granted. And we need to be in the, 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 the pages of what the instruction our Father has given us and, and be men of God, to, to stand strong and, and be firm in the faith. You know, I'm just thankful again how God continues to use us as men and as women and as a family of God. And, um, you know, the... the the way everything is going about us, we know that we're in a time and, and it's not a time of, of things are happening right now because the Bible is true to us and how we are to live and conduct ourselves in this world. What we're involved in and what, and what we are seeing, these are things that needs to take place and going to take place, but they're going to get far worse in the world now uh, then they will better. Now for believers, the blessed hope for the come, we anticipating of the coming. So when we see these things that's going on around us today in the world, we, we get excited as, as much turmoil and afflictions and trials and, and what the world say injustice, these things that's happening before us, we don't get beside ourselves if we have no hope. Jesus is alive and well. He's, pre he's preparing a place for us and the anticipation of him coming back. That's what we look for. Now, the, the fact that we're in, in the world and not of the world, these things we're going to go through. If none of this was happening, we still have an adversary that wants to trip us up. And because of that reason, if we lose sight of our hope to come, then we'll become more worldly than we will spiritually. Amen? So these are the things that God has prepared us for. He's equipped us for. God has given us the Holy Spirit that helps us, teach us, and comfort us. So we, we have hope, church. We, don't, we, have, we have hope believers that's watching. We, 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 don't, we don't be dismayed. See, the, the, our, our, our condition that we have, we would have a sinful anger. But our position now, we can have a righteous anger to see clearly that God is in control. He's in control. And the, the, the way everything is transpiring and happening, God's word is so relevant today. As we continue in the second book of Corinthians, and we're going to pick up in verse 8 through 15. And, you know, Paul is, is reminding the church of, of Corinth of things that they set out now to do a, a year ago. Now, we already have established in the first book up until this point that uh, the church of Corinth, this was a place of wealth because the word, the word it, it, it is right there by the, the seaport. It, had, it was a seaport where boat and merchants come in. So with that, there was a lot of money exchanging. So this wasn't a poor area. So when Paul is talking about Macedonia, it's not a church per se, but it's a group of Christians that's alongside the church of Corinth or, or in Corinth. It's like we have Eulis, Hearth, Bedford, you know, different regions. But, but the, 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 the emphasis was the church was planted in Corinth. But we had Macedonian believers. Amen? Mm -hmm. So He's continuing this, and now because this area in Macedonia, there's believers there that has a gift ready for Titus to come receive. Now, once they got once they got the information of what was going on in Jerusalem, that there was a need, this church was ready to go. Now, Corinth had the fire, but because of the false teaching, they got sidetracked. So the gift was a holdup. So everything that Paul has been talking about up this far, about boasting about them, 
and how Timothy was, 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 was excited to go see them. Well, in their false teaching, they laxed. So now it's time for, for Titus and Sylvanus and Timothy to come receive this gift to take back to them. So this letter that Paul is writing to the church, he's reminding them, look, they're coming. They're on their way. And they're saying good things about you. But when they get there, your gift need to be ready to give to them so they can move on. Mm -hmm. It's because ministry don't stop. Right. Christ don't stop for right. us. Mm -hmm. If we have set our heart to do something, we need to do it in the Lord. When these things don't happen and there's a delay, how does that look? That's a bad reflection. Now, who looks bad? Not the Lord, but you do. So Paul was reminding them, hey, what he was doing, he was doing to the church of Corinth like he did with Timothy. He was stirring up the gift and remind them of what they said. Because you said it. Mm -hmm. So if you said it, that means God put something in your heart. Anything God put in your heart, act upon it. Yeah. It ain't an act of like quickly, like I'm going to do it right now, I'm going to do it today. No, no, no. And especially if there's a, a, a designated time of coming to receive it or receive a gift or receive a, a work to do the process of doing it you got to uh, line everything up that when the time comes to receive or the time to finish because there's a designated time and in our time is not the Lord time mm -hmm. but in the seasons if you will the season if you will once once these once it, it comes to that point that that gift or that work got to be done finished and ready to receive. Amen? Amen? So these are the things that he was reminding them as we pick up in verse 8. He says, I speak not by command, by Amen. commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. When Paul is saying this, he's not talking about a literal commandment, but he's reminding them of what they said and what the, what the Lord has put in their heart. It's more of our inspiration and not a, a, a command of I'm telling you to do something and you do it. It was a simple state of fact of how the heart of the act of the people. Because in turn, we'll see this in verse in chapter 9. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen, church? Amen. So let's turn to uh, Proverbs 18:16. Proverbs 18, 16. And all this is related to this passage. Proverbs 18, 16 reads, <clears throat> A man's gift makes room for him Amen. and brings him before great men. And then Luke chapter 6, verse 38. <clears throat> give and it and it will be given to you good measures pressed down shaken together running over will put will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you see it will be measured back to you all paul was reminding the church of corinth he was reminding them of what they said that they was going to give when Macedonian believers got wind of that, they already had collected and was ready to give it. They was ready for Titus to come get it. Corinth had stalled. Mm -hmm. Everything hadn't been given. But Titus is on his way. And Titus is going to be there shortly. And because of that reason, if that gift is not ready, Titus can't wait for the believers in Corinth. He's going to receive whatever they collected mm -hmm. and then what Macedonia and, get, and he's going to move on. Because mm -hmm. Jerusalem believers that's in Jerusalem, they're waiting for there's a need. Mm -hmm. See church when God has set us up and he has prepared us to give and there's a need that needs, that need needs to be met because that person can't wait. See we look at needs on, on people we look at more in a materialistic way 
and not a spiritual way. And because of that reason, we, we fall short. Now, when we say, Lord, I'm going to bring you $10, and we're cheerful in doing that, and when it's time to give that $10, all of a sudden, our mind changes and says, well, I can only give a dollar. Well, what happened to you when you said it, and you was very cheerful, and I'm just using money as, as an example, because this really not about, uh, based on uh, tithing offering, because we'll get to that. Tithing offering is whatever God has placed in your heart is a tenth of whatever you make. And with that tenth of what you're making, <clears throat> that tenth of what you're making, that is between you and the Lord. I can't instruct you and I can't tell you. I can't instruct you and tell you how to give it and when to give it. That is between you and the Lord. Because of that reason. And Paul already had established with this church what they said that they was going to give. He didn't instruct them to give it. They voluntarily said it. Now he's holding them accountable of what they said. He didn't instruct them to give. Amen? Amen. This is what the Lord has put in the church. And because the Lord put that in their heart, they are going to be held accountable of what they said. Because this is what they're saying and believe in their heart of what the Lord has placed in their heart. In a roundabout way, you can't do anything for the Lord unless he put it in your heart. Because you're his child. He's your father. And because you want to please your father, that desire in your heart. Now you have desires, but God will change those desires according to his will. Now, according to his will is, and what I'm saying, change. Because we've been created in his image and his likeness, and we had a knowledge of God, and now we've obtained a relationship with God, our way of thinking is going to change. If our way of thinking is going to be like God. That's what I'm talking about, the change. God ain't spiritually just zapping you and changing you. No. Now that you're his, you are conforming more like Christ. That's the renewing of your mind. So when you talk about giving, see, it's, and that's why I don't want to make it about money, because it wasn't just about money. And we're going to find out here later. But if it was based on what they said. So if it was a giving, of, we don't even know. It could be a, a, a hundred pound a week because he don't specify money. He just said a need. Because when you look at the early church, just like we have today, Look at the different ministry we have. Homeless gift. Food pantry. It's not about money. See, when it comes back to the church in itself, offering, tithing, offering, that's a must. Why? Because that's something laid up in the storehouse that when a need needs to be met, if somebody needs food, now the church is set up to be able to provide food for them. See, we have to get out of this, 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 this uh, imaginary or imagination about money, 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 money. Money is a tool. God is the source, but money is a tool. It is an aid to help. It is an aid to do things that need to be taken care of. Paying your mortgage, paying your utilities. That is a tool. But the source of the, of the matter is God is the provider. Amen? Amen. And he sustains us. We are to manage it and be good steward of what God has given us everything. So this is what Paul is reminding them. So as we continue on in verse 9, <clears throat> he says, <clears throat> For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty may become rich. All that means is, let me just ask the question. Jesus left riches, glory, holiness, a non-sinful world, and came into a sinful world. He didn't come down to this earth and display that I am the Christ. He didn't come down and display, I am the King of kings and Lord of lords. I am the true Son of God. Jesus never said that. But what he did, he came and he related to the people that was in sin. Mm -hmm. That's what he mean by poverty. 
He didn't bring the riches with him. Now, Jesus was on this earth and he was rich, but yet he didn't portray himself as rich. He portrayed himself as poverty and poor. Now, let's ask the question. What money did Jesus bring? None. What did Jesus actually have while he was on this earth? Nothing. But who provided for him and sustained him while he was here? God did. Now, if God going to do that for his only begotten son, and now he has many children, you don't think he's going to sustain you that way? So where's money coming about this? Why do we keep talking about uh, when it comes to tithe and offering, put an emphasis on that. When we do that, we diminish of who God is to the people. We cannot do that, church. When we do that, now you have a one-track mind. Oh, I got to give a tithe. Oh, I got to get, I know the Lord said 10, but I don't care. You can give 100% of your paycheck. If you do it begrudgingly, he's not honoring that. Yeah. God loves a chill for giver. When Jesus walked on his, this earth, what sorrows did Jesus have? He had sorrows because of sin and how it had desecrated people to not recognize him. That's when he cried out, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how would not have gathered you like the chicken, like the uh, hen gathered her chicks? He wept over sin. Was there wealth on this earth when Jesus was here? Of course it was. But it doesn't compare to his wealth. But Jesus didn't, saw, didn't seek those things. Jesus could have came in glory. He didn't have to be born in a stable. Joseph and Mary go to the inn to pay taxes and there's no room. The innkeeper, all I got is a stall. And Joseph did, Joseph and Mary didn't holler about, don't you know who I'm carrying? I'm carrying Jesus the Christ. They didn't say that. Okay. We're fine because God had placed it in their heart and they're being obedient to God because the angel is leading them. <laughs> That's why when Jesus was born, the angels went to the shepherds. So again, Paul is reminding church, this is what you said and this is what you need to be doing. So verse nine is a continuation of how Jesus himself, what a perfect example. Jesus didn't display I got bling bling. I'm all that in a bag of chips. He didn't say none of that. He didn't say, look at me. I'm the, I'm the Messiah, the anointed one. He didn't do it with no emphasis like, you know, I'm down with it. No, no. Jesus came in humble with humility, and he displayed it by serving. He displayed it by serving. He left riches now, glory, and became poor for our sake, for our sake. To pull us out of darkness into light. To have a life of abundance. See, now that we're in Christ, and that's why it can't be about money. You are rich. You know why? God has stored up for you an inheritance. Now let me tell you, what is an inheritance? A inheritance is something that you're going to be to obtain where you didn't even work for. Now spiritually you are working because you're being obedient to God. But that treasure and that inheritance that God has stored up for you, that was a given once you became his child. Yeah. <laughs> you inherit the inheritance that the son has. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, those that are watching and those that are here and those that are listening, we are grasping what's really going on. We got to get out of this suppressed, oppressed, vexed spirit and mindset because we are free. And the liberty that God has given us, if we start looking at our problems and our situations and our issues of life, when we start looking at that stuff, we're going to be distracted. And we give a foothold and room and a door for the enemy to come in to distract us. They, we have already been warned and told that these things were going to happen. And as they're happening, we don't get beside ourselves and say, oh, Lord, what am I do now? Wait a minute. If God already knew it before, you knew it. He's trying to prepare you that when it comes, you can still be joyful and walk on through it. Mm -hmm. See, we, we, we got to get out of this mindset that nothing's going to happen to us because God got us and we are all power and we're in him. We can't. 
We're in a sinful world. God knows exactly what's going on. God has already done what he needed to do. The time just has not been fulfilled yet. But the world's been judged. Satan's been judged. Mm -hmm. All God is trying to help us along the way with is that we remain in him. Don't get caught up or don't get sidetracked on what's going on in the world. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And when we have a work to do and when we don't set our mindset of what we're going to give, we need to do that. If it's our time, if it's our serving, if, if it's our giving of money, if we happen to have all these things, that's what God is looking for. But it has to be done cheerfully, not begrudgingly. Well, you know, and then this is what we'll do. We'll get in the church. Man, I'm going to give 100. How much you going to give? What it, what, when we're giving, it's not to be told. Yeah. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees did. Remember the money changers? Or the, the, the offering coming in and Jesus was looking up, looking at, at, uh, at who put uh, money in the basket? The Pharisees dropped all, the, all these hundred dollars of bills and the widow came and dropped the two, two pennies she had. And Jesus asked the question, who gave more? It was the woman. Because the woman's whole, whole source was God will provide. God will provide. The Pharisee gave out of his abundance and he didn't recognize God. You see the difference between the two? I'd rather be poor and rich than rich and poor. Because it didn't add up. If I'm rich, if I think that I'm rich, but yet I'm poor spiritually, that's, that's going to end for me. Because I'm going to walk away with nothing. But if I'm poor and rich in Christ, the inheritance, the storing up the treasure, that's all laid up for me. So, these are the things that Paul was reminding the church of Corinth. Verses 10 and 11. <clears throat> And in this, I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it, that as there were a readiness to desire it, so there also must be a completion out of what you have. You see, when we get sidetracked, because there was a designated time when Titus was going to come get this gift. And because of that, when we see, if we get sidetracked and all of a sudden it comes, do you, you know what happens when we don't go ahead and do what God's asking us to do and we delay on it and he, and it, and he comes? Or of the person that's coming to receive the gifts come, we change our mindset. We'll change our mind. Now, we again, I said it earlier, we was all in. Oh, I'm going to give 100. But then time go on, and you haven't given 100 yet. And all of a sudden, we're at the, we at the ninth month, the tenth month, and all of a sudden, uh, Titus is coming to get the gift. Everybody haven't given them money. What's going on? Well, you know, when I first said that, I was all excited about it. But you know, I could, this done came up, and that done came up. We start backtracking. Well, wait a minute. What happened in the process of us giving? And I'm using money as an analogy. Just the, the purpose of understanding the giving. What if it, we, I was supposed to give 10, 10 bags of wheat or grain? And I've only given four. And I got six more to go. Well, I didn't have a, 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 a complete harvest this year. And I can only give four. I know I said ten, but I can only give four. Wait a minute, what happened? The abundance of what you had, you had it then. Mm -hmm. If you go ahead and give it, the Lord will take care of it. Because that desire that he put in your heart, he will take care of it. Nothing's going to happen to it. So... When we get sidetracked on the things that God has placed in us to do, it stalls everything. Because in the process of doing that, there's no way you're going to be able to hear the word of God. You won't. You, 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 you'll, you'll, you'll be complacent and you'll come and do it out of duty 
and obligation. See, Lord, I came, but yet you haven't gave yet. Now, did I say money? Because giving is your time, it's your service, it's your working in ministry. I didn't even mention gifts. God gave you a gift. But see, when, when we don't listen to him, and when we sit down on him, all that stops. This is, can't be an operation unless you are allowing and letting and choosing God to be in you and to lead you and to guide you to serve and work. That's doing God's will. Amen. Yeah. So he's reminding them and he's telling them that you said it. He mentioned it. You, 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 you begun and were desiring to do a year ago. See, a year is up. One year. Whatever you decide to do, 12 months out of the year, 365 days, and you lingered the whole time, regardless of what it is, you've lingered, what happened? You got distracted. All outside of what was going on Corinth, Corinth was well known. Because again, it was a wealthy place. But there was believers there that was in a position to further assist mm -hmm. other churches. See, I go back to say this. If this is how God has set this up, this should be happening today. It does not mean money, church. It could be a time of you coming alongside, maybe helping someone. If a ministry star, you come along and help them and giving your time and service that you can go back. These are the things that we have to understand what Paul is, is, is instructing and reminding the church of Corinth. And uh, let's turn to Leviticus 27.30. And all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is the Lord. It is the, it is the holy, it is holy to the Lord. Now in that short verse, what I just read, you notice how God didn't mention money. He mentioned seed and land. See, back then, that was more than just you bringing money to the church. In the old covenant, there was food brought, bread. There was just animals that the, the priest ate. And in, in the, the consecration of the people, after everything was over with, whatever was left over, they ate it. But where was the money? See, back then, you had merchants where you had to go get grain and wheat and barley. But what grocery store are you going to go to? You slaughtered your own meat. See, the Old Testament for our learning. The grace that we have and what God has given us, his grace, we have stores now. Mm -hmm. We have banks that we can exchange our money. We, have, we, can, we don't have to wait to the harvest of the wheat or the grain. We can go to the store and get these things. Mm -hmm. We can go to the store and get the fruit. We don't, but, but now the Lord still got the land that's still being produced, amen? Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. You have farmers, right? Yeah. Okay, now... If God has made better provision for us, yeah. and we're not seeing that, now we talk about, I don't want to get no tip of no money. It's not about the money. It never has been about the money. It is the heart. And if you love God, it doesn't matter. Two pennies? She looked at God. That widow looked at God as her provider. God already said that he was self on supply of things according to his riches and glory. We say the scripture, but then we'll haul our money. Well, that's not what he's saying. Abundant life doesn't mean you're going to have a million dollars in the bank. Um, abundant life means you are free Amen. to roam this earth and do whatever God has instructed you. Just don't do the things that the world do. That's not where God is. God is in the world to come, and that world is in you. Yeah. You're in a dual citizenship. You've done with that world. When God, when Jesus purchased you with his blood, 
Because that's that was a sacrificial, graceful giving. He gave his blood. Gave now. That's an act of service. He laid down his life. That's an act of service. Now, as you notice, I'm saying gave, which in turn is saying giving. He left and gave himself. So, if Jesus did that, and he paved the way for us, he did the hard part. He conquered sin. And now that we have received him, we're more than conquerors. Why? Because our sin no longer reside in us. We are new creatures. Remember, we just read this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, any man, woman, boy, or girl, be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So these are the things that God has instructed us and God has given us. Matthew chapter 14, <clears throat> verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to, to, to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitude heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and healed their sick. When he when it was evening, his disciple came to him, saying, This is a, de a desert place, deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and two fish and look, looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciple gave to the multitudes. So they all Ate and were filled, and they looked, they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Giving. He didn't send them back to the store. He's the source, church. The manna that Jesus that rained down for the Old Testament Christians. The manna was here on earth. And the only, only thing Jesus did, because Jesus looked to the Father. Two loaves? I mean, uh, yeah, two loaves and five fish? And it feeds over 5,000 people? Because Jesus was connected to the source. And as believers, we're connected to the source. This is what Paul is reminding the church of Corinth. Don't get lazy on me now. This is what you set out to do, and you need to do it. Turn uh, a few pa uh, chapters over. Matthew 20, 28. And let's just start in verse 7. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. See, Jesus knew the only way you're going to prosper in the Lord, you have to believe and then serve. Don't worry about how you're going to serve, just serve. Because, again, that's where the Holy Spirit come in. Our helper, our comforter, and our teacher. Amen. We God already know we can't do it. He knew we couldn't do it. 
Because we tried that with Adam and Eve. Deception came. So God sent us his spirit now. Your, his spirit is in you. That's why you can't revert back and be a sinner. That's the purchase and ransom of blood. That's service. That's giving. You was poor, naked, desolate, and straight, headed straight for hell. But he redeemed you by his service and his grace. Grace now. See, the love of God, grace and mercy is easy for him. Because it all goes into one. That's why the grace and the mercy is new. So when we serve in the Lord, we shouldn't take for granted a mercy and grace. The moment we wake up, we should be praising God. And I'm not talking about an act of praise where we're shouting and praising. There's a time for that. But just admonishing God. Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. It's, Lord, it's a day that you made. It's a good day, Lord, because you allowed me to see it. I, I, I'm ready to serve, Lord. However you, capacity you want me to serve. And if we can get that mindset and just stay right there, and, got, and, 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 and then put that as a desire in our heart, what will we be neglecting from? Absolutely nothing. Because now we've made ourselves available. We've crucified our flesh, we've taken up our cross, and we're going to follow. We're going to serve God. We're going to give to Him. Because we've already said that if God is the giver, which He is, He's not going to withhold from His children. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verses 10 and 11. And in this, I give advice. I'm sorry. The uh, verse 11, I mean, I need to follow up on that. The, but now you also must complete the doing. That, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also must be a completion of what you have. So, Paul is saying this. Whatever you had desire to give, you need to finish it. That's what he's saying. At the latter part of this, this verse, and that's why I gave you an analogy about the $100, and you maybe only gave 50, or if it was 10 bags of grain, you only gave three. It's time for you. It's not, it's not a, 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 a saying of pay up now. No. Paul is trying to encourage them. Something sidetracked you. From completing this. So, and we'll get to this in the next few verses. When you set out to do something, don't you know if you don't do it in a timely manner, you won't finish it? And, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Verse 12. Ver, for if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to the one who has, and not according to to the to what he does not have it has to be an act of intent intent is an act to do intentional is you will do it if it's an intent to do it intentional you will do it that makes sense mm -hmm. so when God is explaining to us or giving us that desire you know what our initial thing is going to be? We're going to obey what God has told us to do. We're not, God, if, if the, the time allowed it, what he said, because uh, remember now, we got to keep in mind, there's persecution going on. They're having to do this, they're having to do this in a way where they can't be known. Because remember, we've already established, Christians are still being killed at this present time. They're still being arrested in an arena. At that time, what arena or what law is coming to arrest you for your, that you're a Christian? Mm -hmm. That's not happening now. So if we have set in our, heart, in our heart to give, why are we lingering in our service and in our giving a time? What's really going on? We have not allowed the enemy to distract us from doing what God wants us to do. And it's a reminder, it's a wake-up call for us today. We got to keep serving the Lord and we got to keep giving ourselves to him. Amen. Give yourself away. Because as you give yourself away, the psalm say, so the Lord can use you. Amen? So, it's another reminder 
Matthew chapter 5, 15 and 16. Nor do a lamp, a light, nor do they light a lamp and put it on a basket. Put it on a lampstand and it, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, why would Jesus say that? You see how he put a connection with believers and the Father? If Jesus is the light of the world and the light is in you, our light should be shining at all times, especially when it comes to giving, because all the, all giving is is serving. Amen? Amen. And then Luke chapter 14, verses 28 through 30. Luke chapter 15, verses 28 through 30. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these are many years I have served, I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you kill the fatty calf for him. This is the inversion of the prodigal son. But do you see the father, how he act towards the one that was actually true, a true son. See, this is a perfect picture of how when you get distracted. That young son that left the house, he had it all. He had the provision. He was in the house. But because of the distraction of what he saw out there, because that's what we do. We'll be in the house of God, but we'll get distracted and we want to do things worldly. When we do that, our service is not going to be 100% with God. We're going to be distracted. Now, we'll keep coming and we'll keep listening. No, we'll keep hearing because when you listen, you do it. Because James said, be doer of the word, not a hearer only. You got to hear it to do it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And hearing and doing is all you hear it and then you listen. When you listen, you follow. If you just hear it, you'll question it. You see the difference between the two? Because now we're doing our analytical thinking. And when we do our analytical thinking, there's no way we will serve God. Because we're not yielding ourselves to him. We're quenching him and grieving him. Because God will never leave or forsake us. When we don't do what God is asking us to do, that's rebellion. Now God is not going to take salvation away, but he'll chasten you. And in the process of this, the chastening and the encouragement is all at the same time. At this particular time. The reminder is because now it's almost like they're trying to the, 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 the decipher of what happened. How did we let a year go by? I'm sure once they read the letter that Paul is saying to them, it's been a year already? <laughs> so we can't we can't sit on our do fall. Remember, the ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. They was all virgins now. Five was prepared and five wasn't. But when the when the bridegroom came, the ones that was ready went. The ones wasn't ready, they went back. But when they came, they couldn't come in. Why? You wasn't ready. See, we don't want to get caught unaware in our service to God. We don't want to get in a place where when the trump sounds, are we caught up? We out here in the world doing something, God knows what, but it's not godly. These are the things where we're being reminded today. And we have to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And then let's turn back to Exodus 
In the process of that, before we turn, or while you're turning there, let me just read verse uh, 13 and 14. For I do not mean that others should be er erased and you burdened, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance also may supply your lack that there may be an equality. Now, as we turn back to these verses, it's going to be related to it. All Paul is saying, no one in your midst should be, should be poor, and that poor mean lacking food, lacking clothing, lacking money. And when I'm saying lacking money, God is not telling us to give all we have and then we neglect ourselves. That's not what that means. Sharing of equality is you meet the need. Remember how the church was birthed and everybody brought their money and then it was distributed to the needs of the people. You didn't have one person or one family saying, I'm going to pay your house note. And then you have three other families house notes need to be paid, but you don't pay this house note and, and you don't have enough to pay the other house note. That's not how God works. When we take it upon ourselves and we do it that way, and we lack, that's not equality. It has to be across the board equally and meeting the needs of the people. Amen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Exodus 35, 22. Exodus 35, 22. They came both men and women as many as had a willing heart and brought earrings and nose rings, rings of necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord, and every man with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, <clears throat> and goat's hair, Red skins of ram and badger skin bought them. Now, did you do you notice he said men and women? Now these are families, and they brought these things. This is the this is the thing that they needed to do in order to build the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now, just one one uh, chapter over, verse th verse uh, chapter thirty six, verses three through seven. Look what look what, look now. Listen to what's happening. In just the next verse, he says, And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing them freely, free will, offering every morning. Then all the craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary came, each from his work he was doing. And they spoke to Moses saying, the people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses gave a commandment and they caused it to proclaim, they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing. For the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. Now, you see that display I give it? They weren't questioning, well, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to give this earring, this set of earrings. They was doing it free willingly. The heart. This is what this is what this is what Paul is reminding the church of Corinth. They was bringing it every morning. It said men and women, men and women. So it, it, it's for the children of God to do God's will. Free will giving, cheerful giving. Now, how in the world gold? They was bringing 
Now, didn't God bless them with gold when they came out of Egypt? He blessed them. But they gave that up like it was nothing. Because the children of Israel realized that God was who he said he was. Mm -hmm. And today, we need to recognize that Jesus is who he said he is to us. Mm -hmm. And that he will provide for us according to his will. Amen? Amen. The last verse, chapter, I mean, verse 15 in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And as it is written, he who gathered much has nothing left over. And he who gathered little have no lack. Now, what in the world do Paul mean by that? If you go to build a house and you do not finish that house, people are going to look and wonder what happened. You didn't count the cost. And all that is, is that when it comes to us giving, if we tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to give you this, but then we don't do it, how that makes us look in the church? Does that make us a hypocrite? Does that make us a liar? God ain't going to be defamed. It's you. Because God has given you the provision to give, to serve, and work. Mm -hmm. Amen? So if God has placed that in our heart, we better be quick about it. We don't linger with it. If, if, if I say I'm going to make the church uh, a dozen cakes, I better get on it and make those cakes. Because there's a time limit on it. If, if, if the church saying, uh, church, we're going to have a need here. Uh, we're going to serve the community. And we're just going to gather baskets together and, and just... Not just food, but you know, tools and and um, different items of, of just ne necessities around the house, yard brooms, rakes, just things that way. And we're gonna do this. Uh, let's see, is 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 June eighteenth, and we're gonna do it on July eighteenth. So that give us a month. Now, however the Lord leads you. Please bring these items before June 18th. Matter of fact, we'll just say, have everything done by June 15th so we can get everything together so we can distribute throughout the community and the neighborhoods. And we have some slackers. And they don't give right away. And it's already June 14th. And then <clears throat> the committee or the pastor may come back Okay, uh, it's June 14th, and this is a, this is a last call because we're going to be going out in three more days to give this to the community. And then all of a sudden, oh, well, uh, this happened, that happened. Wait a minute, uh-uh. You was excited from the beginning. What happened? How did you lose that excitement? See, if I have an intent to do something and then don't do it, then that's not real. That's not matching the desire. But if I, am, if I am intentional to do it, then that means the desire would be met. Amen? Amen? Serving. So, when we hear, go spread the gospel, that's a word, right? We don't say, say I think I'm just going to wait for somebody to come to me. What do you think going to happen? Who's going to come up to you and ask you, I want to hear the gospel? Tell me one person. Nobody going to ask you that. But if we have a mindset... Oh, I know the Bible. I know from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm just going to wait for people to come to me. Let's see how many people are going to come to you. Because work, faith is an action word. If faith is an action word, faith will cause you to work and serve, church. Amen? Amen. So this is the thing that Paul's reminding him. Reminding him. Now in verse 15, our last verse, let's turn over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verses 17 through 19. That's 1 Timothy chapter 6. Command those who are rich 
in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust the uncertainty, the uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, <clears throat> ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold of eternal life. What a, what a way of just Paul reminding Timothy of what to tell the, the rich people that's in the church. Mm -hmm. See, if I'm hoarding and hoarding and hoarding, when I die, what am I taking? When I meet God, I'm going to meet God with just myself. But God is going to judge me on how I serve him and how I gave. Now, I can't give to God. I can give my service to him and I can give my life to him because that's what we did. We was purchased by blood, but we gave our life to him and he brought himself in, the spirit. And now we're new creatures. So, when it comes down to it, church, are we really giving or are we lacking? Have something distract us that we can't serve and give to the Lord? Those that are here, those that are watching, have you sat down on God? Because God has allowed and Jesus hadn't come back yet. Well, all these things got to happen, but then I'm going to wait. And when I start seeing these things I'm familiar with, then I'm going to get serious with God. Well, wait a minute. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and has heard the gospel and embraced this, now is the time to serve. Now is the time to give. And because of that reason, Jesus will get the glory. God in heaven will get the glory. And man, that world will see God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit within you and give him praise because they'll see there is a true and living God. Amen. Today, if you have heard this word, do not harden your heart. Today is the day of salvation. And for that reason, do not let this opportunity go by. If you believe Jesus in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Lord, we give you all the praise.